Sanchez. Thank you for showing up for Gaza consistently. Thank you for showing up again, again, and again. Look at the Palestinians around you. Look at the Palestinians around you. And your consistency is a sign of hope to all of us Palestinians in Canada, in the diaspora, and in Palestine. This month marks the holy month of Ramadan for Muslims around the world. It is a time to fast, worship, and to spend time with family and loved ones. Yet, Palestinians in Gaza are struggling to find something to break their fast with or put food on a table for their families. They're struggling to find safe places to pray and worship in. Mosques that are completely destroyed. And the joy of this month is not felt for Palestinians in Gaza as they mourn the ongoing murder and loss of their loved ones. For Gaza, Ramadan is different this year. For over 160 days of disease, starvation, torture, ethnic cleansing, and genocide. It's been over 160 days of us being witness, witness to the most documented, yet most denied genocide in human history. Because our government are enabling this genocide to go on and on and on. Shame on this government. Trudeau's government. But we, the people, stand here today to demand an anti Canadian complicity, an anti Canadian government's complicity in the genocide in Gaza. We will not remain silent. We will not turn a blind eye while bombs are being dropped on innocent Palestinians. And we will, we will seek justice by any means necessary. Again, I repeat, by any means necessary. shut down streets across the country again and again and again and we will continue to shut down them again and again and again until, until Palestine is free until Palestine is free from the river to the sea They say the old will die and the young will forget, but your presence makes it clear that we did not forget and we will never forget. We may not live in Palestine, but Palestine lives in all of us because we always say in our millions, in our billions, we are all Palestinians. In our millions, in our billions, we are all Palestinians. And as our famous Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish said, I'm going to say it in Arabic. Allah has 
البدايات أم النهايات كانت تسمى فلسطين وصارت تسمى وصارت تسمى صارت تسمى Our, our fight for Palestinian liberation continues. Continues until Palestine is free from the river to the sea. And we're here today to make our demands crystal clear. To make our demands crystal clear in case, in case our government still does not get them. Canada, this stolen land, this shameful government, your complicity with the Zionist regime must end. Your complicity with an apartheid regime, an apartheid state that have violated human rights must end, must end now. Your complicity with the regime that is carrying out the genocide on children must end. A genocide on children must end. <laughs> Toronto, I want you to make your voices hear for Gaza. I want your voices so loud that it's impossible for our government not to hear us. I want your voices so loud and for us all the way from North America, all the way. So loud that we get a demand together. We demand an Everybody, give him a round of applause! <laughs> Sisters and brothers, I want to say how proud I am today to see all those Irish flags flying in the air. And it was also very, very special as we're coming up to the Irish Intifada, the Irish Uprising that took place on Easter Sunday in 1916. A lot of people will ask, why is it that the Irish support the Palestinians? Well, let me tell you, my friends, we know a lot about occupation. We know about colonialism. We know about oppression because we went through it for 800 years before we kicked the British out of the south of Ireland. And it is not lost on anybody that it was the British to the Balfour Accord that ended up dividing Palestine and causing the problems that we're seeing here today. Before we go much further, this coming Monday, there is a very, very important resolution being debated in the House of Parliament. And it's an NDP resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire, an arms embargo, and the restoration of unrepresented So, if you can take out your cell phones, and go to ceasefirenow.ca and you can send a message directly to your politicians of all political parties and demand that they support this resolution and remind them 
that there will be no votes coming from any one of us if they're not prepared to support the ceasefire now. And it's time that we spoke not just to the leaders here in Canada, but world leaders. And we need to be asking the question, why? when Israel is guilty of an illegal occupation and violation of international law, when they are guilty of a blockade of Gaza in violation of international law, when they are guilty of an apartheid state which deprived Palestinians of their basic human rights. Why is it? Why is it that they always ask the question or say, that somehow Israel has the right to defend themselves. I've yet to hear a politician of any stripe in any country ever say that Palestinians have a right to defend themselves. So we need, my friends, to make sure that our voices are loud and clear. And I'm reminded of the words of a great Irish patriot named Robert Emmett and he read an insurrection against the British Army and during that insurrection he was captured and he was basically executed but before he died before he executed him he gave a speech from the dock and he basically said let no man write my epitaph until Ireland takes its place among the nations of the world and my message, my friends, here today is let no man write the epitaph of Palestine until Palestine takes its place among the nations of the world. And Palestine, my friends, are very, very close to taking their place among the nations of the world. I can feel it in my blood, and I know for a fact that some of you in your lifetime and in a very near lifetime, you're going to be celebrating with the Gazans on the beach of Gaza. And we're all going to be celebrating the free Palestine. That much I know, my friends. So, I'll just finish up by saying again how proud I am of the country of my birth. I'm proud to see the Irish standing in solidarity with the Palestinian community. From Dublin to Palestine, for those that are here today, standing with us, those that are Palestinian, if you're Palestinian here today, make some noise. Let's try it one more time, because I know the Arabs are real louder than that. So if you're Palestinian, standing here today, make some noise! Now for all those that are not Palestinian that are standing with us today, make some noise! It truly goes without saying that the people around the world, they stand, they stand with the people in Gaza. They stand with Palestinians. They will always stand with us until liberation, until our land is liberated, until our people are liberated, until the right of return is granted to each and every single one of the Palestinians, not just here, but all around the world. Palestinian myself, hearing every single one of you just now, it's something that I truly can't put into words. It's something that, it shakes me in my core. 
deep in my heart, deep in my soul to hear that every single one of you, 23, 24 weeks in, you still stand with us. You still stand in solidarity with us because you stand on the right side of humanity. So just before we continue, give yourselves a round of applause for being here today. And that is why we say these two chants. In our millions, in our billions! For the Muslims that are here, find someone you don't know. Say Ramadan Kareem. Get some hasanat while you're here, why not? Look at the people beside you. For those that don't know, we are in the holy month of Ramadan. So for the Muslims that are here today, we are fasting. We are here in these streets, changing at the top of our lungs, from the depths of our soul, while fasting. Can you imagine that? No food, no water, nothing at all. And we are still here, chanting at the top of our lungs, mashallah. Look at this community. Now as you look to the people that are beside you, that are around you, you can visibly see not everybody is the same color, not everybody is the same race, not every single person is following the exact same religion as you. Because it does not matter where you come from, it does not matter where you're going in life, it doesn't matter your color, your race, your religion, your creed, none of that matters because we are here today standing with humanity. We are standing against against the Zionist state. We are here taking a stand and saying we will not back down until liberation. This started long before October the 7th and we will not tire, we will not rest until our people are liberated, until our land is liberated one day, inshallah. And this is why, this is why we say this chant too. The people united will never be defeated! In downtown Toronto last night. And for those of you that don't know why he was here, he was hosting a fundraising dinner. A fundraising dinner that he was charging $1,700 per entry per person. The most ironic bit about this dinner is that he wanted to discuss ways to make living in Canada more affordable. $1,700 per person, per entry, to discuss ways how, can it, how Canadians can live more affordably. Isn't that ironic? What do we think of Justin Trudeau? What do we think of Justin Trudeau? Shame, shame, Trudeau. Shame, shame, Trudeau. He is feeling so much just overwhelming sensation that he feels he needs to step down from his position. Can you imagine the man that is complicit in the genocide of many of our friends and family members feels too stressed that he feels the need to step down from being Prime Minister of Canada? How genuinely pathetic can you be as a man to say that you feel overwhelmed in your position as one of the highest powers in the entire world. Shame! Shame! Boy, God! Boy, God! Boy, God! Why haven't we started marching? I'll tell you why. Our lovely friends at TPS are still blocking us in. Shame! Shame! Shame, shame, TPS! Shame, shame, TPS! I have been at every single action, 
every single protest. Tell me why it's never the pro-Palestinian side that gets arrested, causes damages, destroys cars, destroys property, vandalizes. It's never our side. For those that don't know, a couple weeks ago, there was a synagogue that was hosting a real estate event to illegally sell land. To illegally sell land in the West Bank. As the Palestinian and pro-Palestinian community, we showed up. And as an outcome of that day, five people from the other community, from the Zionists, the people that support terrorism, five of them got arrested. Palestinian community got arrested that day. Zero people from our community got arrested that day. Yet, TPS, CBC, CTV, CP24, they all claim that we are the bad ones. They all claim. They all claim that the people that look like you and I, the ones that have the darker skin, with the facial beards, the ones that wear the hijab to be modest, the ones that live in this country and are modest and take care of others around them, they claim that we are the bad people. They claim that we are the ones that incite terrorism. Shame! TPS claims that this is due to safety reasons. How come we have been out here for 23, 24 weeks now. How come the first 21 weeks there was no issues at all? It doesn't possibly have to do because the Zionists are putting power on the TPS. Does that have any reason? Shame, shame, TPS! No, for Palestinians in Palestine and that in the diaspora. Palestinians are used to what? Occupation, ethnic cleansing, Apartheid, genocide, police brutality, racism, you name it, right? So growing up in the diaspora, Palestinians, they were treated differently. They experienced all different kinds of racism. And a lot of people, and including the Palestinian community, came to this country, the country of so-called Canada, that, you know, you can't be free here, there is law, there are rules, you have the right to freedom, the right to protest, the right to speak up. And then, we've been protesting for over 160 days. Very peaceful, extremely peaceful in comparison to other protests. And what do we experience at the end? What do we encounter? We encounter the so-called police services. They claim that they're here to keep us safe. They claim they're here to protect us. Are they protecting us right now? Are we expressing our feelings, our anger, the way we want? Growing up, everything is dictated for us. How you wake up, how you work, the way you should take to work, everything, from food to speaking to everything, everything has been dictated to us. And what is CPS trying to do to us here? They're trying to dictate to us what to do. They're saying, oh, take this route, oh, take that route. Oh, now there is a ticket for $10,000. You take it, you make it publicly, they came back and be like, no, we didn't say that, that's a lie. So they retract their statement. The week after that, they give us a ticket for standing on the truck. Today, you can't take this route. Tomorrow, you can't take this route. What do you want? What do you want? What are you trying to do? The people in this country and our elected officials and Justin Trudeau and the chief of police, they need to understand by protesting and organizing these protests, people are letting their anger out in the most peaceful way. What do you want? Do you want people protesting peacefully?
peacefully on the streets or protest in other ways. Like they should be paying us money to protest on the streets in the most peaceful way. Because of people don't protest, do not let out their anger, do not express their feelings in a peaceful way, they gotta choose different ways to let out their anger. So instead of supporting us and protesting peacefully, they're encouraging people to go and protest in a different way. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Is that what you want? But we will not, we will not be dictated. We will not let them tell us how to protest and where to protest and when to protest. We decide. Who decides here? Who decides here? We will not go the exact same cycle. Growing up to that occupation, this sounds like a Zionist occupation to us. Most of you experience how it feels like to go through checkpoints, right? Who knows how it feels like how to go through checkpoints? Look around you. Doesn't this feel like a checkpoint? Let me hear you. Doesn't this feel like a checkpoint? Doesn't this feel like it's a checkpoint? They want us to go a different route, but we're not going. We're staying here because we want to decide how to protest. If it's gonna take us to sit here and not move, we're gonna sit here. Anyone, does anyone have an issue to stay here? I can hear you, do you have an issue? I mean, the weather is good today. Look at the solidarity, look at the love, look at the Irish love, look at the beautiful people around you. I've been showing up for over 160 days. To the point, it doesn't feel like a protest to me, honestly. This feels like a community. This feels like family. I look forward to protest so I could see these beautiful people fighting for justice, fighting for peace. I mean, who does that anymore? Who does that anymore? We do that. And we're here on a mission. It's not to free Palestine only. It's not to free Gaza only. We're on a mission to free the entire world. We need to understand, maybe we do not talk about this quite often, but it, this is not just freeing Gaza. This is not just freeing Palestine. We're freeing the entire world. This is a battle between good and evil. And this thing over here, Every single one of you chose the good battle. You chose to be on the good side. We're fighting evil together. It may look like this is a battle for Gaza and it's a battle for Palestine. Yes, part of it. But who's, who's our opposition? Who's our enemy? It's the evil. It's a Zionist regime. And a Zionist regime has its roots around the world. And we're fighting it over here, in Canada, in the States, in South Africa, and in the Middle East, and in Europe, in Britain, and all the world, everywhere around the world. So this is part of a big movement. It's not just a pro-Palestine movement. This is a pro-good movement against evil and against bad people. This might be a difficult time for you, for me, for us, but we believe there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Who does it over 160 days 
protesting. And then we're gonna protest for 160 days more. We don't care. We're gonna protest. We're going to protest for as long as it's going to take. Because we believe this is the right thing to do. This might sound a bit biased coming from a Palestinian from Gaza. But I'll tell you, this is not just for Gaza. This is not just for Palestine. This is for all of us. We're freeing ourselves around the world. So again, back to, to the racist police over here. To the dictator police. Are you gonna let them do whatever they want to us? Are we gonna let them dictate how to protest? We say to the police, no justice, no peace, no racist police, no justice, no us to work together. Like they're our friends, they're like they're our buddies, you know, they come to the protest, they smile to us, they try to sweet talking to us, be like, hey, we're here to protect you, we're here to make your protest safe. And then people go home and then they go knock on their doors, they kick them, they brutalize them, they terrorize them, they get people tickets, and then they come the next day and be like, hey, we're your friends. We're here to support you. We're here to make your protest peaceful. We're here to make your protest easy and smooth. But one and one doesn't align. Like, you have to prove to us that you genuinely want to work with us. By preventing us from protesting, it's not a good step for you. It's not a good step, honestly. You have to show us you have actually speak louder. I don't take words. I don't take words. We have no feelings anymore. We're numb. We're numb to feelings. We're numb to words. I only understand actions. Okay? To a Palestinian, to a Palestinian, and someone from Gaza, I only understand actions. And when you block us and preventing us from protesting, it only tells me one thing. It tells me that you don't want to work with us. So we have one chant for you, because whatever you do right now reminds us of the occupation. Remind us of the occupation. We call them, we call them, and they remind us of the occupation. And it is TPS KKK. Are you all the same? TPS KKK. Are you all the same? The TPS at its very foundations is a racist organization that is meant to brutalize, suppress and surveil racialized communities across Turtle Island. Shame! We talk about Canadian complicity, we talk about investments in arms, in arms manufacturers, we talk about arms being sent to Israel, but the TPS is also a form of complicity because they are used to surveil and arrest and brutalize Palestinians for exercising their freedom of speech. Shame! For the many of you that do not know that the Toronto Police Services and many other police services around Canada engage in training programs with the Israeli military. You can look this up. Shame! It's called the Deadly Exchange. You can Google that. It's called the Deadly Exchange and they exchange notes on how to suppress protesters. And so the New York police, the Toronto police, have exchange programs where they learn from the Israeli military how to suppress us. And the same, the same tactic that was used to kill George Floyd in America was used here in Toronto just a couple of months ago against a Palestinian protester. This is why, this is why we come out and we say, TPS, KKK, ID for all. The Muslims in Gaza, who are, they're not able to even have Ramadan in peace. They're not able to break their fast. They're going through a famine. They're not able to reunite with their families and have gatherings. But we must be here in solidarity with them. Despite the fact that we're out here, many of us who are fasting, who are thirsty, who are hungry, but we're here because we need to be here because this is the least we can do. So in the spirit of Ramadan resilience,
civilians and in light of the TPS not allowing us to proceed, we're going to stay here, we're going to be resilient and we're going to take the most busy intersection in all of Toronto. He's a member of the Canadian Council of Imams, surviving as an Imam for the past 27 years. Give it up to Imam Ayman, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace on our non Muslim friends, those of the other faith and no faith. And I want to start by thanking our brothers and sisters from the indigenous community whom I have a lot of respect for whom I have spoken on their behalf a lot and whom reminds us about our struggle as Palestinians we and you are together in the same boat and I want to thank our brothers from the Irish community thank you for being here with us today this is indeed something that means a lot to us to see other faith background, other culture communities standing with us to send a very strong and clear message to the whole world that we're here standing for justice. If you ask the children with us today, what is it you are standing here for? They'll tell you simply, we're asking for justice. We're asking for the end of occupation. We want to see a ceasefire now. five months sending a single message only we're saying cease fire now cease fire now cease fire we want the return of the indigenous palestinian to their own lands and homes that's what we're asking for we have the right to return no one on earth can take it away from us And we're asking simply to stop collaborating against the civilians in Gaza. On behalf of the orphans of Gaza, on behalf of the widows of Gaza, on behalf of the elders of Gaza, on behalf of the civilians of Gaza, I want to thank every one of you who is here as to them that you are not alone. We're in the same trench with you. We're fighting the same battle. And we're saying to those ugly thugs, we're saying to them who take our words and put it out of context and wage a war against us in social media, you'll never be able to win because our message is very clear. We are standing for justice. We say to our officials, it does not need much intelligence for you to understand what we want. It does not need much from you to understand after four, five months of demonstrations on the streets that all we're asking you is to wake up your conscience, wake up your moral principles, stand up for our principles as Canadians. We have been as Canadians peace brokers. You are portraying us. You're portraying your own principles. You're portraying your own principles and moral values. Stop it. Go back to your conscience. When you go at the end of the day and have a meal with your friends, when you have a meal with your children, when you talk your children to bed, remember that there are children in Gaza don't have that luxury. They're unable they're unable to find the shelter that will provide peace and security for them. They are every day going to bed knowing that it is possible that they might not be able to wake up once again. They have been fasting for the past five months. They've been breaking their fast on very simple weeds and grass to satisfy their hunger. Shame on you, our officials! Shame on you! 
These are human beings like us. The only difference with them, between them and us is we're living in Toronto and they're living in Gaza. It does not mean that they should be suffering what they are suffering. Because of your collaboration, because of what you're doing behind the scenes, because of what you're doing to support the genocide in Gaza. We say to you clearly and loudly, as people of faith or no faith, as people who study the history and understand what happened to Pharaoh could possibly happen once again. Because the believers of the children of Israel were exposed to genocide by Pharaoh. Pharaoh was brutal. He was full of his own superpower. He chased the children of Israel with his F-16s, with his F-35s, with his, with his intelligent muscles, with the sophisticated war machines that he brutally used against the civilians of the children of Israel. And the children of Israel did not have the means to stand against him, but the mighty was there for them. We say to our officials, to the leadership, to the international community leadership, wake up your conscience. Do not fail the mass community all over the world. Because all over the world, the whole community, international community, have been demonstrating and hitting the streets and sending one message. Cease fire now! Cease fire now! Cease fire! To, to all of the leadership of the international community, my message to you today, never give up the hope. Resilience is what we believe in. And our resilience is stemming from the power of the people of Gaza. From the mother who have lost her babies and children and stand up and say, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal Let's continue to do whatever it takes. Let's continue to do whatever it takes to stand for the children of Gaza, for the women of Gaza, for the elders of Gaza, until the occupation ends, until the siege is over, until the children of Gaza are able to eat until the wounds of the people of Gaza are able to heal and we will never give up until that happens. People of Gaza, we are with you in the same trench. Put your hearts and minds with me so we can conclude with a prayer for them because we believe in the power of the prayers. We are fasting and the month of Ramadan is not about abstaining from food and drink only. It's about raising your conscience and remembering there are those who are struggling all over the globe. And these people need to be acknowledged. And the way to acknowledge them is by abstaining from food and drink. So let's put our hands together and pray to the mighty guide, Allah Azza wa Jal, to alleviate their suffering. Allahumma ya Rabbi samawati wal ardi wa Rabbi al arshil azim. Allahumma nad'uka bi jalalika ya Rahman ya Rahim. Ya Allah, we ask you to stir justice and peace on earth, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Ya Allah, our brothers and sisters, the children of Gaza, the elders of Gaza, the widows of Gaza, have no means, Ya Allah. They are hungry, Ya Rabb, feed them. They are thirsty, Ya Rabb, quench their th thirst. Ya Allah, they are living in insecure environment, Ya Allah. Bring the peace and tranquility unto their hearts, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Ya Allah, we pray to you, supplicate to you, you are the mighty to give us the chance to stand and visit and pray in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa Amina Mutba'inneena Rabbil Alameen. We ask you to open the hearts and the minds of the international community leadership, Ya Allah. Bring them to their own conscience, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Restore the peace and justice on earth, Ya Arham Ar-Rahmeen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa sallallahu alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And thank you so much. It's our freedom to protest. Share yeah. on DPS. Yeah. DPS, the truth the government or the Zionists, they're not gonna tell us what to do. They're not gonna tell us how to live. It's our right to protest freely. It's our right to live our, uh, our lives freely with justice. Yeah. We have the power. 
So we're gonna stay here for a little while longer. We're gonna let them know that they can't tell, they can't tell us what to do. We tell them what to do. We want a free Palestine. We want an earth embargo. We want a ceasefire. We want to end this occupation. So let's keep the energy up. Free, free Palestine. Ontario. I have asked it in Quebec and Montreal and I will ask you again. Do you want Palestine to be free? Do you want Palestine to be free? Then I need all of your energy, all of your voices, everyone in the back, everyone across the world stands with Palestine. We stand with Palestine! We stand with Palestine! We the future leader! Okay, we're gonna do something a bit different today. We're gonna have to divide the crowd, okay? For the people that do not, do not want to pray Asr, the middle of the day prayer, I ask you Kindly, if you could move to the right side. And the ones that want to pray Asr, the middle of the day prayer, if you could move to the left side. If you do not want to pray, you can pray in any way possible. You could take a moment of silence. You could check our link tree. It has... So, prayers to the left, my side. If you want to take a moment of silence and you want to check out our link tree with the educational material and petitions, please come to the right side, my right. But I also want you to sit down. So we're going to be sitting down over here. Please go to my right, have a seat, and let's sit down together in peace because apparently that's the only thing we could do in a peaceful way.